So you already created a supplier and every bit, everything? Yeah, yes, yes. I'm just checking it. Uh, so we will start. Okay. Yeah, it is there. So setups are there. Uh, yeah, to start with, uh, so if we see here, so there are uh, two types. So first thing is uh, variables dashboard. So this will give okay. us a high level understanding that what is happening in the business mm -hmm. in terms of payable module. And uh, the second tile we have is that uh, invoices. So this is particularly for invoices. Mm -hmm. So whatever the actions that we need to do in terms of invoices, so we can mm -hmm. uh, see all those actions here. And it will show also the validation part and the different kinds of invoices that, ha that have been processed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other part we have is that payables. So payables mm -hmm. here, we have two parts. So one is manual. And the other mm -hmm. one is uh, PPR. So that is uh, batch payments. Mm -hmm. So first I'll uh, navigate to uh, invoices. So here, if you see, we have uh, totally five tiles. So the first one will be scanned. So scanned is nothing but uh, the invoices that has been scanned and sent to Oracle. And Oracle will send us as a feed. And through that, we will import the invoices. So this is what we mean uh, scanned. So here, okay. if, you see, if you see, we have uh, different uh, buckets. So that mm -hmm. is uh, 0 to 7 days, and 8 to 14 days, and 15 plus days. So we can see those details here. And if you, That is a budget, you said? No, this is not a budget. I'm saying this is kind of a budget. 7 days budget, 14 days budget, uh, 15 plus. It is kind of a categorization. OK. Yeah, between seven days, how many uh, invoices has been scanned and processed? And maybe between eight to 14 days, how many invoices have been scanned and processed? So that is it's just keeping account of how many are being done or processed. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. So if I click this particular button, if I have the relevant information, system will uh, give me the inputs. Okay. So if you see in this case, so someone has processed it. Uh, so which means uh, uh, it, it is before uh, 15 days. So we have all those invoice details here. So the moment I click this button, I'll have the uh, details and uh, the recent one. So recently, if I have created any transaction, so that will appear here. Mm -hmm. So recent means always it is uh, in a day, like uh, 24 hours, the uh, system will calculate and give us the inputs. So I didn't okay. create any transaction. So that is the reason I'm seeing uh, no values here. Mm -hmm. And this will give me uh, the uh, the invoices that mm -hmm. has been put in hold. Mm -hmm. So if you see here, so there are uh, 21 invoices on hold and other 10, 10 invoices on the uh, purchasing thing and others will be uh, zero. So others is nothing but the manual holds that we can uh, put in. So basically there are two types of holds. So one is system hold and the other one is manual hold. So system hold can be something like a distribution variance, line variance, or purchase mm -hmm. price variance. Okay. So, so purchase price variance is basically, uh, let's say uh, I procure an item. So I mm -hmm. quote this for a price of maybe 10 rupees. Mm -hmm. And while I'm booking this invoice, I mark this price as in 15 rupees. So which means five rupees is an uh, difference. So this I call mm -hmm. either purchase price variance or invoice price variance. So this will okay. go in hold unless I have uh, the tolerance set up for this particular uh, uh, BU. Okay. So, so those are the uh, difference uh, in this one hold. Uh, so apart from the system hold, we have mm -hmm. also the manual hold. So when we will use manual hold is that uh, there will be uh, some special cases. Uh, so this will not be applicable in past model because in past we are not going to customize to a greater extent, but we mm -hmm. will allow uh, to a little extent. So in this case where we have the manual holds, let's take a scenario where we will have a customized workflow. Under this customized workflow, we will handle this hold part where mm -hmm. in this case manager uh, a so, so manager a will hold this particular invoice 
until mm-hmm. he receives the relevant inputs let's say he needs uh, uh, the the po uh, details of this uh, invoice so so this yeah. will be handled through dff so through mm-hmm. this dff basically we will import this dff from ap from po to ap module okay so unless we have this dff in place manager will uh, keep this in hold so okay. this will be one of our uh, requirement so in this mm-hmm. case we will have manual hold so similarly it depends on the business scenario that uh, how do they want to handle the uh, hold so in th- mm-hmm. for those cases we can have manual holds okay so this is about the system hold and manual hold so when there is a hold system will uh, give us that 21 validated validations are pending or maybe 10 or whichever count it is mm-hmm. so system mm-hmm. will give us the information so if i click here so from here directly i can uh, release the hold i don't need to go to invoice and again query back and again give it so okay. if, if i know the invoice number and the other things i can directly release it from here instead of going inside so but uh, what is the criteria to re- release it yeah so we have uh, two kind of criteria here so if this is a uh, manual hold and if mm-hmm. i have authority to release it i can release directly from here okay or if it is a system hold so let's take an example uh, the same example that uh, the distribution and the line is different mm-hmm. which means distribution is 100 and uh, line is 50 in this case mm-hmm. system will put an hold so mm-hmm. to release this hold i cannot release it from here so i will have to navigate to the invoice from here and okay. i have to change it and then i will i will have okay. to release the hold so you basically have to fix it first and then only release yeah. it yeah okay so this is for the system hold so for mm-hmm. the manual holds i can just uh, release it from here okay yeah yeah so that is about the holds mhm and these uh, the things that are there right the squares are called the tiles or something what are they called uh, yeah basically tiles uh, okay uh, yeah this is part of the dashboard actually so okay. usually it is being called as a dashboard but you can say each tile okay. the uh, the aggregation of tiles maybe we can call it as a dashboard okay <clears throat> yeah so the next part that we have is that uh, approval mm mm-hmm. so approval again we will have uh, <clears throat> the list of approval that is pending or that is uh, rejected or if mm-hmm. something is in progress so that will be uh, highlighted here mm-hmm. so one uh, invoice has been rejected so that is displayed here mm-hmm. and then we have the prepaid so prepaid is nothing but uh, the advances so advances mm-hmm. we have so in uh, past two months we don't have any uh, advances so only thing we have is that uh, uh, it has crossed more than uh, two months so basically it is to monitor that whether we have prepaid expenses to book or to adjust uh, against the particular supplier okay so to tell me something so if it's prepaid right yeah. so oh, you're saying 0 to 30 is like you know you have 30 days yes. i mean somebody pays uh, in 30 days no it's Then, not that actually so this is uh, about the uh, prepaid invoice that i book between the days okay okay between okay in the last 30 days and the last uh, whatever 30 to 60 days and then 60 plus days yes okay yeah even this if you see it is between days when i book this particular transaction or when i okay. scanned and imported the transaction okay so it is like within that uh, specific number of days yes correct okay yeah so this is the high level dashboard that we will be having mm-hmm. and uh, apart from that uh, we have uh, the uh, actual transaction that we will we will be making so here if mm-hmm. you see there are uh, uh, three parts to it uh, plus one accounting period closing or opening Uh, provided we have access to open and close the periods for the ap module okay so here in the first part we will have the invoice creation so these are the different uh, action items that we can make uh, 
uh, while creating the invoice. So this is to create the invoice, and uh, this is to create the invoice through the spreadsheet. So we can uh, mm -hmm. create uh, invoices in Excel sheet and we can upload it. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are two ways of uh, creating the invoices. So one is using the AFBDA, and the other mm -hmm. one is AFBDA. Okay. So, so again, the same thing, what we saw in uh, mm -hmm. CL module, the same thing, uh, mm -hmm. but we have an option. So, so the reason we have this is uh, for the data migration. So when we speak mm -hmm. about the data migration, so if you see in EBSR, the uh, on-premise environment, so basically mm -hmm. we will have control over the environment and we can code it and we can migrate the data. But mm -hmm. here in Fusion, we, we cannot uh, afford uh, to have uh, the coding part of it since this is a SaaS model. So mm -hmm. if this is fast model, we will have access and we can do all those things. So that okay. is different. But in SaaS, we will need uh, some sort of tools and uh, uh, the uploading tools. Okay. So that is where we have uh, the FBTA and the FBTA. So basically the difference is only the performance. So using uh, for data migration, it is always suggested to go with FBDA to increase the performance because mm -hmm. the AFBDA is something like our WebDA. So this will decrease our performance or it will not uh, give more hands in terms of performance. Okay. So this can be used for the day-to-day -day business. So let's say mm -hmm. there is a business where uh, we will receive uh, the data from the legacy system and we will plug in into Fusion application. So this mm -hmm. is happening in day-to-day -day basis. So if a okay. uh, client or uh, the customer doesn't want to go to uh, the past model, instead mm -hmm. they wanted to have this uh, kind of uh, patching scenario. So for mm -hmm. those cases, we can uh, suggest uh, AFBTA. Because okay. uh, if you take per day, it will not be more than maybe 5,000 invoices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maximum so for okay. those cases we can suggest uh, this part so we will be okay. seeing this as well so, so when it comes to this uh, afbdi right or fbdi for that matter yeah. let's assume there's a legacy system as you mentioned and the legacy system is sending the data into our uh, fusion okay. ap or now we'll, let's take AP. So when it's sending it, so it is the technical person who has to map everything, right? Yes. From uh, the whatever the legacy uh, system to this spreadsheet, whatever the columns are there. Yes. Right? Yeah, correct. So basically, and once yeah. once they map it, and then uh, that's when the data can flow into this, and it gets. Uh, then we can do the rest of the things. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Uh, so there are okay. two two parts. So one is through the coding part so that we will mm -hmm. use through the uh, web services and the uh, APIs and mm -hmm. the other part uh, we will do with the manual uh, upload so entry that, uh, yeah yes so okay. we will give the template to the user and maybe they can utilize it yeah anyway. yeah I'm not talking about the manual one because I was just thinking about in terms of when you said legacy system so yeah. the only way you could uh, grab that information is if the system sends some other legacy system sends into a fusion ap yeah. uh, or whichever module that is is to map these uh, fields with that and then yeah. only you can send it right yes and okay. also it is suggested that if you have uh, data more like definitely if we wanted to have the integration between the legacy and uh, the fusion application it is mm -hmm. suggested to take the past application because it will give more control over uh, the application or the data. Mm -hmm. So we can uh, we, we can customize or we can uh, plug in more than one or two applications as well. Okay. What it, happens if you are on SaaS and then you want to bring the data from the legacy? Yeah, there you you can use only the web service call. So using the web service call, basically the data will be imported throw only the FBDA template, which uh, we will be configuring. So based on that, we will uh, have the scheduled processes uh, scheduled and uh, through that we will import the data. So this mm -hmm. is the normal process, but uh, to, to have a uh, good control over the system, it is suggested to take the pass as an uh, implementation yeah. model. Mm -hmm. So is there a possibility that, you know, in the legacy system, let's say there are additional columns and uh, we don't have those in uh, this fusion here, what yeah. happens in that case? You create yeah. new, I mean, you 
put some DFFs or something? What do you do? No, DFF, we cannot handle through DFF because the records that we will be importing will be huge. So for mm -hmm. each transaction, mm -hmm. we cannot have this DFF uh, thing mm -hmm. uh, to be attached to it. So this is one thing. And the other part is that uh, maybe uh, one field, it can be accommodated. Uh, apart from that, if you have more data or uh, the more mm -hmm. fields coming in, then uh, mm -hmm. the, the the fields that what we have as a standard uh, thing in Oracle. So for those cases, uh, we need to uh, add a few columns and the other things in the tables, but we will not have access to the tables. So that is why mm -hmm. I so you have to call Oracle. I mean, you have to open an SR. Is no. that how you do it? I'm, I'm just asking. I don't know. I'm... No, like uh, if you have additional columns to be added in the table, Mm -hmm. So it is not suggested because SaaS model by itself will say that we cannot have more of a customized environment, but instead it will be uh, the application that will be given by Oracle. We will be using as it is uh, apart from few changes here and there. Mm -hmm. But if we wanted to have more customized environment, we need to take the pass uh, model. Okay, but they will not change anything, even if uh, if there are additional fields. Let's assume there are additional fields from legacy, okay. and that uh, you can probably you can't accommodate that here in uh, Fusion yes. as SaaS in SaaS. Let's assume. Um, so if the, if that's the case, so Oracle is strictly saying if you want those kind of additional changes to be accommodated, you have to go for a pass model. Yes, correct. But we will not do anything anything in SaaS for you. Yeah. So if, if uh, the data can be imported using uh, the existing uh, table structure, so that can be okay. made. Yeah, yeah, that I understand. But what I was thinking is sometimes let's, I'm just throwing out there, let's assume there are additional fields or columns that are not there here. Yeah. So how do you do it in that case was my question. I mean, and if you are in a SaaS model, forget about pass. So what would be that scenario? How would it work? Yeah, in that case, we cannot add additional columns in the table. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you see, uh, that is the difference between on-premise and uh, the uh, source model. So, so which not... means that we, as a functional consultant, you should be able to tell that to the client uh, that that is not a possibility. Yeah, yes, correct. Okay. And uh, so if they say, how uh, how do we solve this issue? We don't want to pay for pass. What would you as a consultant do? No, if we don't want to pay and uh, if we wanted to continue only this way, um, mm -hmm. still we wanted to have uh, this imported into our system. So the only way is to uh, add it as an attribute or utilize the DFF. So, okay. I mean, that might create the performance issues, uh, but still that is the only option that I can suggest. Uh, okay, okay. Now I'm just thinking in terms of, right. you know, how would you suggest or you know, people may come up with these kind of questions, right? They won't, don't yeah. want to spend money, but uh, they want everything. So <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, uh, so that is the option that uh, we have. So apart okay. from this, uh, it depends on the data that what we are getting in. Uh, mm -hmm. So based on that, uh, we can suggest. Okay. So maybe uh, there are a few a few things that we can accommodate with uh, DFF, and there are few things that uh, we cannot add as a DFF as well. Like let's mm -hmm. say we, we have additional columns that is required in uh, maybe asset module. So mm -hmm. there it will be difficult to handle because we don't have much DFF uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that depends on the data that uh, we are getting in. So based on that, we can uh, suggest. But okay. as far as now, I could see only one option that is uh, using the DFF. Okay. So will you be uh, showing how to create a DFF or yes, something yes. like that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so we have uh, the standard invoice creation or the manual way of creating invoice. And mm -hmm. then we have uh, invoice through the spreadsheet, AFBDA, mm -hmm. and then we have recurring invoices. So if you mm -hmm. see EBS, we can create uh, recurring invoices, but uh, here if you see, I mean, manual way of creating the recurring invoices. 
here if you see you can create a uh, recurring invoices only through spreadsheet we cannot create it in manual yeah so the one that says create recurring invoices is a spreadsheet yes correct okay yeah. and can you tell me why we create recurring invoices yeah to avoid uh, the repeated repeated uh, uh, entries like let's say i i have maybe uh, 100 offices or maybe more than 100 offices so all are rented okay. mm -hmm. so in this case i want to create 100 invoices per month uh, on on opening of the period uh, on a daily on uh, a periodical basis so to avoid this if there is an uh, way that i can automate it so i will utilize it so here in this case <coughs> i have created, i know that i will have a rent of 10000 per month oh so, yeah garden so it's kind of repeated things that you know of yes repeated bills uh, as the recurring bills we can say recurring bills okay yeah so for those we can use the uh, the recurring invoices okay so when we create this as a template basically this will create uh, multiple invoices for the period so let's say mm -hmm. i create this on the month of january so i mm -hmm. say for the 12 uh, month so i know that mm -hmm. this will happen for the next 12 months also i'm not going to change the land slot so mm -hmm. in this case what i will do is that i'll create for the 12 months so system will generate the invoices for all 12 months and for the respective uh, month i can just uh, run the concurrent program called validate invoices and i can validate for all the offices so mm -hmm. this is how we can handle it okay yeah and then we have uh, invoices where we will be able to uh, see the invoices uh, from here so we have two things one is from uh, dashboard and the other thing from uh, the invoices so basically mm -hmm. dashboard will show only the recent items so if you see 60 uh, 1 plus 1 day, uh, 61 plus days so mm -hmm. we will we will have it as a group uh, in this particular time mm -hmm. uh, but if i wanted to take maybe 4 months or 5 months old invoices maybe i'll go to manage invoice mm -hmm. and i will have the invoice number and uh, by which i can find the invoices okay so this is basically a query page mm -hmm. yeah and then we have uh, apply missing conversion rates so maybe the, there will be cases where uh, the rate uh, the currency rate is not defined and mm -hmm. if you want to apply it manually we can apply it from here okay and uh, validate invoices maybe so you... this conversion rates uh, the apply missing conversion rates these conversion rates are the ones that we give in gl right yes correct okay and in case there we missed something here you can correct with yeah. in the sub ledger yeah for a particular uh, date okay provided this is in uh, user uh, based uh, currency conversion what does for that corporate, mean corporate yeah for corporate we cannot uh, give directly in the application since mm -hmm. we, we have already defined a method called corporate and we will give the rates there in the corporate rate yes but the other ways are there where user can enter it uh, manually so for mm -hmm. those cases we can apply it from here we don't need to create it there uh, so is so let's assume so in gl now at least the previous ones that we did we applied corporate yes right yes. so if that is the case and uh, but corporate is something that automatically adds up every single day no no we will load it through the yeah, i mean I, i mean that's what what i meant this yeah, when yeah. we load it it's for every day or whatever selected uh, period of time yes so and in that case we can't use this here yeah okay yeah. this is only when uh, you use other than corporate and if you use a uh, user defined uh, uh, conversion rate that's when you can uh, change it here yeah. or add it here basically yeah okay yeah and then uh, validating the invoices and uh, we have the approval so we can initiate the approval mm -hmm. and uh, importing the invoices mm -hmm. and uh, maybe while importing we have error or something so we can correct it and so these importing <laughs> invoices everything is an interface when we come to that yes okay and uh, import payment uh, request uh, 
so maybe this can be also imported. Uh, the payment request types will be there. So for example, we have uh, <coughs> refunds. Uh, we have sold some items, so we have refunds. So this will be one of uh, payment request. So similarly, mm -hmm. if we have something, we can we can import it. Okay. And we have accounting part of it. Uh, we can do the create accounting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, the adjustment journals and we have uh, reviewing the journals and payables to <clears throat> GL reconciliation. So this will basically sort out the difference between our payable module and the uh, GL, GL module. Yeah, correct. So tell me why you would have uh, create adjustment journal here. What has got journals to do with AP? Uh, logically speaking, <clears throat> it shouldn't be there. So uh -huh. since this is a uh, standard role, we are seeing these options. But usually okay. we will have only create accounting and pay uh -huh. this to ledger. Yeah, role. because only those two make sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> there are other two don't make sense to me. Yeah. So yeah, okay. since it's a standard uh, role. I, I, I didn't uh, change anything. So that's it. Oh, it's the standard role. Yeah. Ah, so you have to go up. So what do you do in this case? So standard role in the sense, what's the role that you've um, assigned to train T now for, for AP? Yeah, so I have assigned uh, three roles to this particular user. So one is accounts payable specialist, accounts uh -huh. payable law supervisor and accounts payable manager. Okay, so let's assume if we don't want to see those two um, in the accounting, what what should you do? You just go and edit it there yeah. at the role uh, level? Yeah, yes, we need to customize the roles. So we need uh, to remove certain functions that has been uh, allowed in this uh, case. So this, so, okay. So the general roles, when you assign, it's automatically giving these to the user. But if yes. you are specific, I mean, if you don't want to see these, then you have to go edit and remove whatever you don't want to see. Okay. Yes. For example, a payable manager will be opening the periods and closing the periods. Mm -hmm. so if I remove this option, I'll not be able to see this uh, manage accounting periods. So similarly, yeah. we have something inside the role. So we mm -hmm. can customize. Maybe we can uh, uh, remove this option. Let's say uh, initiate approval or flow. So I mm -hmm. don't want this particular user to uh, initiate the approval. So the okay. second level, uh, it will be initiated. So I will give mm -hmm. to the another uh, user. Okay. So that uh, that way we can basically customize the roles. So based on that, we will have uh, the functions that uh, I can perform. Okay. So um, a basic, very, very basic question <laughs> um, when we come to AP, right? So if when we say AP, right, what in the P2P uh, cycle, yeah. we, when somebody asks, right, if you've done AP or you worked on AP, so you just start off with the invoice piece or do you have to talk about the purchasing part also? No, you're saying for the functional consultant or the finance consultant? Mm. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, you know, if you, if you are, yeah. if you're a finance, you're going for a financial functional role, right? Yeah. So, and if you say, oh, I don't know about uh, purchasing module or whatever, but I know only AP, I worked on AP. So do you start off just from the invoicing piece? Yeah, so if this is handled by the functional consultant, so functional consultant okay. is the one who can handle both the SEM part and the finance part. So in this case, if this particular person is doing the, <clears throat> let's say, uh, let's say he's doing an EAT. <clears throat> so we mm -hmm. have configured the system. So he is doing the UAT to the customer. So in this mm -hmm. case, he will start from the purchasing, which is from the requisition, purchase order, mm -hmm. <laughs> receipt, and uh, invoicing, and payment, accounting, and reconciliation. So everything he will show. But in okay. case, uh, but in case uh, we have uh, specifically uh, a SEM consultant and finance consultant. So in this case. Finance consultant will start from invoice and SEM consultant will start from our acquisition and end with receipt. Receipt are receiving. So from when you that, say, is it S SCM, right? SCM. 
SCM, supply chain supply management. Chain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so if it is an AP guy, he doesn't have to uh, uh, typically, I mean, of course, overall, they'll know that uh, how it works in terms of, uh, you know, purchasing or acquisition or that. But in general, uh, functionality wise, they don't need to know what's going on in SC, uh, SCM. Yes. Okay. I guess we have but, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, but would it be possible for you to show me from uh, just the requisition part how it works, or is that some other setting that needs to be done? Yeah, that uh, needs. It's a bigger set. Uh, that's a bigger configuration. Okay. Yeah. I thought it's something simple, so you can just put something there and push it here and show me. Because we have uh, the catalogs and uh, we have approvals. Uh, ah. There is finance part of it, uh, the tab. Maybe I can show the configuration of uh, tab. Uh, but complete purchasing, uh, I cannot show because. No, no, no. You don't have to show the complete purchasing. But I'm mean, just like simple. Let's say somebody creates a, a requisition purchase order and you know that flow. Yeah, that's what uh, that we need. Uh, SEM consultant. Uh, ah, that leads a lot of. Okay. Yeah. It's not simple yeah. then. Yeah, that needs uh, some configuration as well for that setting. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so after accounting, we have uh, the uh, create mass addition. So that is for the asset invoices. Maybe if I'm purchasing a desktop, so I'll mm -hmm. create invoice and I'll import this into FA module and I will convert this particular invoice as an asset. So maybe if you in future, maybe after uh, maybe two months, if I look at this particular asset, if I wanted to check the invoice for the audit purpose, mm -hmm. so I'll be able to pull it. So that is where we will need uh, the create mass addition process. So that is from the AP module to our uh, fixed assets. Fixed module. assets, okay. And uh, manage uh, accounting period. So this is basically to open our close period. So that's it. Mm -hmm. So uh, do the assets thing, uh, I mean, does this, um, is that part of AP as well in the sense like, or is it something additional because you have the role? No, it will be part of AP mostly. Because oh, okay. if you see, uh, the invoices will be created from uh, AP consultant. So AP consultant okay. are uh, the AP, uh, uh, the one who creates this invoice creator. So he should be able to create the invoice and push this data to the fixed asset module. Okay. So basically the invoice will be created. So we have mm -hmm. these parameters as well to create the invoice. And once that is done, so basically we will create the, <coughs> this one. Uh, the, this will trigger and schedule process. So this okay. will push the data from uh, payables to uh, fixed asset module. So this will be there for the AP concern, AP, uh, AP person, okay. Yeah. yeah, so these are the options that we have to perform mm -hmm. in the uh, invoices. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, maybe I have the invoice number and I'll just go and search with the invoice number. I can just enter this and I can click search. So this will okay. take me to the uh, particular uh, invoice page. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, uh, we have the analytic part of it. Uh, so maybe uh, this will be handled through the technical person. So mm -hmm. once that is created, so we can mm -hmm. have this here. So if you mm -hmm. see, so we can uh, see the chart and the other things here. Mm Is this something that you created or somebody created? No, somebody created. Uh, so it will be created by a uh, technical resource basically. So it is kind of a uh, uh, chart and the other graphical representation. Mm -hmm. So it will just give us uh, the high level understanding on the invoices uh, created and the other things uh, based on the values that we are giving. In here. Okay. 
Yeah, I think uh, parameters are not set up. So maybe I'll check if uh, something is there. Maybe we'll see this in next class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this, so this is nothing but uh, the uh, graphical representation uh, way of looking at the data. Okay. So the same data, it, it can be seen in multiple forms. So that is what about the graphs and the other things. Yeah, so so this is to match the purchase order. So if we have a purchase order, so mm -hmm. we can just give the purchase order number and based on this number, system will uh, pick in the business unit supplier and the site and all those features and we can create the invoice by okay. using the invoice number and the invoice date. Okay. So we will try to create uh, on- So just a quick question. So um, when we look at this one, right? So it's starting off with creating an invoice, but we don't have any place where to create a supplier. Yeah, supplier will be created. Okay, uh, okay. Let me uh, take this one. Because for me, the start with the basics. I've never worked on AP, so I want the basics. Yeah. Yeah. So the more the basic, it is better. Yeah. So uh, if you see in EGS, so supplier will be cre created in uh, mostly payables. But yeah. future, in Fusion, if you see, it will be created under procurement. Uh -huh. So under procurement, we will have the supplier creation and all those things. Uh, okay. But uh, AP, AP executive or the AP user will not have access to create the uh, the uh, supplier. supplier and here, okay. Yeah, and uh, here we have uh, two parts. So one is to create the supplier, and the other one is to create the supplier site. So you what was that? Supplier and supplier site. Site. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Site is nothing but uh, the another office of the supplier. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so anyone who has access or anyone who has uh, uh, the required role uh, mm -hmm. for the for uh, the procurement executive, uh, mm -hmm. so we can create the supplier. But to create site, I need to be an procurement agent. So procurement agent is nothing but buyer. So who is buyer? Buyer is basically the one who raises the purchase order or who raises uh, the requisition to the supplier. Mm -hmm. So logically speaking, so he is the one he will know that who is the supplier needs to be entered into the system. So actual yes. process starts from uh, the procurement agent or the buyer. So who is okay. the one who needs to create the supplier? So that is why in Fusion, mm -hmm. there is a, a little change uh, from ABS. Okay. So this particular procurement agent, uh, he will be uh, assigned to a particular business unit. So let's mm -hmm. say we have uh, business unit A and B. So if I have mm -hmm. access to only A, so which means I can create supplier only for the business unit A, but I cannot attach business unit B here. The person who has access to the business unit B only can create the uh, site of the uh, what do you call uh, the business unit B. But whereas I will be able to still create the supplier, but I will not be able to create the supplier site or assign the site to the uh, vendor. Mm -hmm. So that is the difference. So that is why the, the, there were a few changes from EBS to Fusion. So where the control has been shifted to a uh, procurement agent. So in okay. this case, procurement agent can create the uh, supplier. Okay. And here, if you see, we have uh, two things. So one is to create uh, the uh, supplier and the other one is to manage supplier or to create uh, or see the created supplier. Okay. Our other one is to import the supplier. Mm -hmm. So, so is that supplier import suppliers is also a spreadsheet? Yeah, yes, correct. Spreadsheet. Okay. And what is merge suppliers? Yeah, so merge supplier, supplier is something that uh, maybe uh, I have two suppliers. So this supplier has merged their business. So in this case, what I'll do is that I'll make it as in one supplier. Oh. 
So is that something that is that you can do? Like you can merge two suppliers? Yes, yes we can do. Oh. Yeah. So we will see that. Uh, so uh, as a first step, we will see uh, creation of supply. So what are the options? That okay. We... Thank you. <laughs> like it makes me, it makes it a little more easier for me to understand. Yeah, so here, if you see, uh, okay, let me create a new supplier called maybe Tata, the same name. I'll try to create a new supplier. And here, if you see, we have uh, two things. Uh, so one is prospective uh, supplier and the other one is spend authorized supplier. So prospective supplier is nothing but that we have quoted with something but we mm -hmm. are not sure whether we will be uh, uh, making the finalizing uh, uh, with that. Yeah. So okay. it is kind of a prospective supplier where we will not do the actual business, but instead this will stay mm -hmm. in our database. So once this is mm -hmm. confirmed, we will make this prospective supplier as a spend authorized supplier. So okay. the prospective supplier will not be able to get in the invoice page as well. Mm -hmm. So the vendors that is uh, assigned as an uh, spend authorized is the one we will see it in the invoice page. Okay. So I just say this is an spend authorized and I'll say uh, this is just an categorization. Mm -hmm. And I'll say create. So this will take me to the page where I can create the actual supplier details or give the information of the supplier. Okay. Yeah. So I have given the tax organization type, and here mm -hmm. we have uh, tax type. I mean supplier type. Supplier type. Yeah. So I'll just say uh, supplier for now. Mm -hmm. And uh, and apart from that, uh, if if we wanted to have this as an Maybe there are a few companies that uh, will work under uh, what do you call the parent and child relationship or uh, mm -hmm. su subordinate companies. So on mm -hmm. those cases, we can attach the parent supplier here. So for the okay. purpose. Yeah, so this is one thing. And uh, so this is- What do you do for the attachments there? What do they expect there So attach on the header? So this is like a compliance part. Uh, so for example, if you take uh, India cases, so where mm -hmm. we will have uh, MSME details and the other things attached. So for the okay. MSME, so basically we will need uh, to add the additional details of the MSME. And apart from that, we will have the MSME certificate as well. So if we have okay. MSME certificate of the particular vendor, what we will do is that we will just click here and we will add the MSME details of it. So for that, okay. uh, we, we can just take this uh, uh, file from our local system, which we, from the, okay. yeah, which we received from the, so similarly, we can uh, take, uh, so this is compliance or country-based uh, requirement to give the attachments. So this is okay. always an option. So how, how would you know that in the sense like uh, country-based or a compliance related, right? Sometimes how, how, do, how do you know which is compliance-based? Yeah. As a consultant. So, yeah. While, while taking the requirement, uh, uh -huh. so client or the customer will give specifically that I wanted to see, see this particular field for when I'm creating the uh, vendor as a supplier. Oh, so the client me, will tell you that. Yeah. Client okay. will tell. Uh, yeah. It, it will be received as a part of requirement. Oh, okay, so, okay. Yeah, so we will document it and based on that, we will uh, map it here as well to have it. So for few cases, we might have this as a mandatory. So for those cases, we will need to change it to mandatory. It's now, required, okay. Yeah, now if you see, this is only the optional field. So only mm -hmm. thing that is mandatory here is only the supplier. Mm -hmm. So unless I give the supplier name, I'll not be able to save this particular supplier. Yeah. But in case you want to make this mandatory, how do you do that? Yeah, that is a uh, technical part of it. Uh, so technical. Okay, so the technical person can make it mandatory if needed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so this will be our uh, header information. Mm -hmm. 
and if we see line information we will have organization products taxation mm -hmm. and uh, payments so you you can give uh, the uh, the name that uh, we wanted to have and uh, mm -hmm. we have other information of uh, the uh, supplier as well mm -hmm. uh, so if we wanted to mark this as an one time supplier we can mark so which means we will use this uh, particular vendor for one time mm -hmm. So when it comes to customer number, right? Yeah. On the right side, what is the customer number here? We're talking about the supplier here. Yeah. So what is the customer number? Yeah, this is only the identification number. Uh, like this is again the uh, country specific. For India cases, if you see the customer number, SIC, and uh, the national insurance number, these things will not come into role. So this will be only kind of an additional information. I'm not sure uh, which country will use the customer number on SIC. Okay. Uh, so it is not anyway, this is not required. So we don't have to bother about it. Yeah, this is only the additional information where for uh, certain countries, if you wanted to use, you can utilize this fields. Okay. Yeah. So what's mandatory here? Nothing in this one, an organization? Yeah, this is only the additional information. Nothing is mandatory. Oh. So all are uh, uh, like, uh, basically, if you receive uh, the copy of uh, purchase order, we will not have all this information. We will have to get it through mail. So mm -hmm. when we are getting through mail, we will not have all this information when the supplier business has established and uh, their incorporation and all those things so when if we have the details we can attach it uh, so that is the point uh, but if you see the entire part this is optional so okay. we don't need to enter anything also mm -hmm. yeah so this is the dff which i was saying so maybe after this we will see that uh, where we can set up this dff but okay. if you set up the DFF, so this is mm -hmm. where uh, we will get the information. Mm -hmm. So the, the DFF name is debt rating. So under the debt rating, I have loaded these values. So I'm okay. seeing these values. The list of values. So how do you know uh, that debt rating is a DFF? Yeah, we will not have anything here. So basically... Nothing to identify yeah. it as a DFF. Yeah, specifically, it will not say this is in DFF. Uh, that based on our configuration, we need to identify. Yes, I have given that rating, so this is a DFF. So that is how we can identify. But okay. for an only user, the person yeah. who's configuring only knows that that's a DFF. But otherwise, uh, like a regular user will not know what a DFF is on this page. Yeah. Just looking at it. Yeah, user will think that this is an usual uh, this thing. Yeah, because that's what even I thought. <laughs> Yeah, only the person who uh, was configured will know uh, it is in DFF. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it on this part. Uh, so basically, it will have additional information about the organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we will have the business classification. So business okay. classification is nothing but to classify whether uh, this is a, a particular category. Let's say this is a fire equipment manufacturer. So for those, we, will, we might have special law subclassification as well. So for those cases, we can use this. Again, this is not a mandatory uh, setup. This is an option. Okay. And also the products and the services. Maybe they might have different uh, products under this uh, particular vendor. So this is all related to the supplier. If the supplier has, let's say, n number of products and n number of services they're providing, all that will be listed here. Yes, correct. Okay. And then we have a taxation point uh, part of it. So let's say we have a fusion tax uh, implemented. So for those mm -hmm. cases, if you wanted to have vendor specific uh, taxation, Mm -hmm. So let's say for vendor A, I wanted to have 5% and vendor B, I have 10%. So mm -hmm. what I will do is that I'll attach the tax classification code so that, so based on the system will default and it will tell us that uh, the, this particular vendor is 5% or 10%. Mm -hmm. 
so mm-hmm. we, we instead of having it at the invoice level we can attach it here itself and mm-hmm. uh, we can automate the taxation part okay so tell me one more thing i mean it's a i mean i'm not very good at any of these but i'm just going to ask you these questions uh, so when it comes to taxes right how to um, like say i am like i'm setting up something right now in ap and uh, i have to set up something for the supplier in terms of taxes how do i know what percentage of taxes should be set up yeah that should be given by a uh, customer Uh, we will get the inputs from customer the supplier will give us that no supplier will not give a uh, customer like in the sense to whom we are implementing uh, customer oh give, the client will give you that okay yeah okay so they will uh, give us the input uh, but apart from that uh, we have a few rates so that will be defined uh, per country uh, based on the country so that a consultant should be aware of Or no, what I'm trying to get at is right. Like, I'm see, I'm like still my brain is always confused with the suppliers and customers. Okay, yes. so now supplier is somebody that from where you are getting the your product. Yes, sir. Okay, so you you let's say I am whatever I am Tata company employee. Okay. Okay, and I'm entering in this term uh, the supplier information. Okay. When it comes to the trans this uh, taxations and all that. so i as a employee may not know exactly what the tax may be but somebody from higher up sends me the tax information no even for the supplier user, no even the user will know because because user will get uh, in the uh, bill or the copy of invoice oh how much tax is there it's yeah. there in the bill yeah yes uh, no but the that, that bill thing comes only afterwards right you're just setting up the supplier right now yeah so there are uh, two cases if this is a new vendor we uh-huh. will not attach directly the tax code so uh, that is my the, question yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, ulta see that i'm coming everywhere <laughs> finally i came to the point yeah, yeah. So, so that was the, my question i'm like how the heck will you know when he's a new person i mean you know he's just yeah. setting him up in the system for the first time yeah yeah okay so for those vendor we cannot set up so this will be for the vendor that is already Uh, available uh, or exist in the uh, legacy environment itself. So we we will have maybe five years or ten years of uh, uh, good business with them. So we will know that what has been done and what is not done. So everything we know. So based on that we can give it. So the reason we are giving it here. So this is not a mandatory setup. So the reason why we are giving it here is that if we see the tax application how it will work is that it will work based on the business unit but not the vendor so if we want to automate for a particular vendor so we mm-hmm. will have to give it here so if we are not giving it here so mm-hmm. based on the tax application that we have set up in the fusion tax basically system will tell us that uh, uh, for this particular business unit this is the taxation but for okay. this vendor the tax rate is different so what we will have to do is that we will have to change the uh, 5% to 10% manually so instead if we have attached here in the vendor system mm-hmm. will basically uh, pick up from the vendor site or the vendor as a whole and it will give the uh, rate the taxation rate okay so, so what i get to understand is anything that's given at the supplier the tax let's assume we are giving the tax at the supplier level yeah. this overrides whatever tax has been set up in the system yes if it okay. is not there in the vendor system will pick from the tax configuration okay yeah but if it is there in the tax configuration and if let's assume if it's there in the tax configuration as well as at the supplier level but the supplier one is uh, you know overrides the tax yes okay yeah so that is about the uh, taxation part mm-hmm. and uh, these are all like rounding off and the other things okay and apart from that we have the tax registration tax classification and uh, the codes so this we will basically define it uh, in the uh, fusion taxes and mm-hmm. whatever it is there we can attach it here okay so all are like uh, taxation code and the withholding part and the other things 
the none of these, uh, but in this one classifications, I think we have some uh, mandatory ones, right? Like, like the physical are, classification no, type this code. Is not mandatory. If I'm adding it, physical. If you're adding it, you'll have to add those fields. Yeah. But otherwise, none of them are mandatory here. Yeah, not mandatory. Okay. Yeah, so this was the part. And uh, apart from the transaction taxes, we will have the income taxes if we are uh, using it uh, maybe for the individual or uh, maybe the companies. So mm -hmm. that we can uh, define like the TDS and the other part, we can uh, define it. Uh, so this will be country based uh, things. Okay. And uh, we have the payments. So payments uh, is like uh, we have two parts to it. So one is that uh, the actual payment that we will be uh, enabling, which needs to be uh, defaulted. So either it is check or electronic or NIFT or wire or any mode of uh, payment. So that we will okay. define it here. So mm -hmm. we can just uh, check this. So for now, I'll just uh, do this one. And I'll just click this one to default. So when I see this green, uh, Check oh, default. Okay. So this is defaulted. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we have the bank account details of the vendor. Okay. So it is not mandatory that all the cases I will need are the uh, bank accounts. So when I will need this bank account uh, is that uh, when I have online transaction or which has uh, direct uh, linkage between the bank and uh, the uh, customer or the client. So for those cases, I will need a uh, bank account. So mm -hmm. because what will happen is that uh, so system will create a payment file. So this payment file will have the information of the uh, vendors bank details or bank and the other branch details. So yeah. unless I give it here, the payment file will not generate the uh, suppliers uh, account details. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason we need this information. So okay. if you are processing the check and uh, the cash uh, part of it, so we will not need this bank account. So, okay. but if we are processing through electronic or to directly to the bank, so for those mm -hmm. cases, we will need uh, this back bank account attached to it. Okay. Yeah, so these are the options that we have. And payment attributes, what does that mean? Yeah, payment attribute is like channels, like how do we want to transmit our uh, this thing, uh, the files to the bank? Oh. So there are uh, two ways of uh, sending the files to bank. So that would be manual, or we wanted to have uh, communication with the bank. So that we okay. call okay. H2H. So H2H is nothing but host to host communication where our portal or our port or our server will be linked with the bank server. So this, okay. we, so for this, we need a bank whitelisting. So bank whitelisting is nothing but bank will add our port or our server details in their uh, IPs so okay. that we can communicate with their server and we can send the payment files. So from there, mm -hmm. bank will pick the files and uh, bank will process it. So if okay. we are not using this option, what we will have to do is that basically mm -hmm. we will have the corporate account of net banking. So from mm -hmm. there we will log in and we will upload the payment file. Okay. So, so from there our bank will pick uh, the payment file and process it. Mm -hmm. And we will okay. get uh, the UTR number in the uh, bank statement. So this is the uh, normal uh, process. So I am I'm a little, I mean, I'm uh, a question here. Yeah. Uh, so where is the supplier site here? Yeah, supplier site will be here. Like we will have the address site and the other details. So, oh, this is all under only profile. So many yeah. things came. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Yeah. So that is what I was saying. So if you see organization and the other thing, so this uh -huh. is just an additional information. So this is not. Oh, okay, okay. I was wondering where what happened. I thought there were many more things to supplier. Yeah. So supplier uh, will be a little weak. Like we can store more information. Yeah. Okay. But these are all additional ones which we are not worried about. The main things are the uh, in profile is the first header part. Yes. Correct. Okay. 
yeah header part and maybe if you want to give uh, the payment method payment so methods you, okay yeah. yeah so these are the two options basically okay but where so in the payment methods is where the where does it sometimes i think uh, and supplier level also we have the payment terms right where do the, where do we attach that supplier level payment terms do we have anything at the supplier site level they'll be payment terms right probably the, the site terms level will be there i mean payment terms in the sense you are saying seven days like net 30 or yeah, whatever yeah. yeah correct that will be there that is at the site level yeah yes correct okay okay i'm trying to relate to whatever <laughs> i was working with you yeah. know and just okay yeah yeah so so that's what we have for two ways of handling the payment so one is uh, to manually upload in the net banking or if you want to add it uh, so basically if you are using the host to host host to host communication so bank mm -hmm. has to whitelist uh, our ip so whitelisting ip is nothing but uh, bank will add our ip with their server so for that our ip should be a public ip instead of uh, private ip so that will be comes under the technical or the infrastructure security team yeah mm -hmm. so based on mm -hmm. that uh, once the bank whitelisting is done so we mm -hmm. can now do the transaction and we can generate the payment file so for this we will have a schedule process so what the schedule process will do is that the schedule process will basically transmit the file from our server to the bank server so from okay. there bank will uh, also have a schedule process where it will pick every 5 minutes mm -hmm. or maybe 15 minutes so based on okay. that our uh, system will pick the file and it will process the uh, particular request if you okay. have balance on the particular account so okay. it, it will process so 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 this is what uh, so that is when we will need the bank account so maybe okay. if i am using only the check uh, as an payment uh, method so for mm -hmm. this case i don't need uh, the bank account and the other details because already i have uh, the bank account and details attached to the check mm -hmm. okay yeah so this is about uh, the supplier so apart from the supplier we need to create uh, the supplier site which means i have uh, two different branches for this particular uh, supplier so i need to create each uh, each uh, site all the branches mm -hmm. so for that uh, first thing is to create uh, the address okay so i'll just create a uh, own address yeah so here i have uh, two things so this will become mandatory for me so i should use uh, at least one of this option so unless i select yeah. this so i will not be able to complete the address part so okay. in this case i have used this for ordering and uh, remitto since i'm not using the uh, purchasing module so mm -hmm. i have left uh, rfq and bidding so when you say remitto what does that mean you're sending my yeah uh, so remit to is nothing but where this uh, payment should be remitted to so once i complete this pro process maybe i'll have uh, the informations of the vendor mm -hmm. so from there i can say that uh, so remit uh, remit to should be defined there okay yeah so i have uh, just given the uh, basic address details and i have added the purpose and apart from that i have the procurement uh, bus so if you see there are lot of bus that is defined but i am seeing only two options so one is tata mm -hmm. steel new and other one is tata consultant uh, consulting mm -hmm. uh, new so which okay. means i have been assigned as an uh, procurement agent only for this two business unit two business units yeah okay 
so apart from other uh, two business unit i cannot uh, assign anything so let's say i am a procurement agent uh, but still i'm not uh, authorized to create any uh, any sites so for those mm-hmm. cases i can create only the uh, vendor so after creating okay. the vendor i'll send the vendor number and the vendor details to the specific uh, department so this particular department will create the site or the addresses and the other uh, specific details okay so for those cases i will restrict the access for this particular business unit for this user mm-hmm. so in this okay. case i have access to uh, two things so i'll select tata steel okay I'll just say site one. So also, basically, saying, whatever you created up is what you're trying to add here as site. Yeah, is correct. So I might uh, differ on uh, the transaction taxes that I have created also. So mm-hmm. it will be always on the site level. So if this is not in the site level, system will uh, check on the supplier. So if okay. it is not there in the supplier, system will pick from the uh, actual tax configuration. Tax configuration. Okay. Yeah. So other things are similar, like we have the payments and the other things. So I have mm-hmm. just added uh, one procurement uh, BU access. So mm-hmm. that is Tata Steel new BU. Mm-hmm. So I'll just uh, save this. So unless I add the address, I'll not be able to create the address. So I created the address, and now I'll try to add uh, the site access. Yeah. So based on the uh, previous setup, we have all those details already populated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So apart from that, uh, we have uh, the purchasing and uh, the invoicing payment part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so okay, maybe after site assignment, I'll uh, explain about this part. So here we have uh, two things. So one is to auto create assignment, or we can uh, add it manually. So auto create is nothing but it will just create a BU assignment and we will have to give the uh, ship to and bill to details if it is. Okay. Mm-hmm. And apart from that, we have uh, the account code generation. So maybe mm-hmm. if we have on a special case, so if mm-hmm. we have the liability account and the prepayment account uh, generated uh, based on the supplier site, so we can okay. give it here. So if the, so again, this is not mandatory. So we can utilize mm-hmm. it from the uh, common configuration that we have uh, done in the earlier uh, session also. Okay. Because always uh, system will check on the site. So mm-hmm. if this is not there in the site, system will take from the common configuration that we did in the earlier uh, thing. Okay. For now, I'm not giving. Which it. means that it is just going to take it from the GL. No, not GL. The payable uh, configuration. We gave the oh. liability account, okay. yeah, those. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, from there. Uh, so, like, if we wanted to have the liability based on the supplier, so maybe mm-hmm. I have three suppliers, supplier A, supplier B, and supplier C. So, mm-hmm. in this case, if I wanted to have a particular liability account for the supplier A and mm-hmm. different account for supplier B and supplier C, so I can mm-hmm. utilize this and say that this will be the liability account for the supplier A. Oh, okay. But this is not mandatory. So I can just okay. leave this. So if I leave this blank, so system will pick from the uh, common configuration that we did earlier in the payable module. Okay. So for now, I'm just leaving it as a blank uh, since we have already created or uh, configured the, uh, this thing, the account code combinations. So I'll just uh, come from uh, the purchasing. So here, if you see, we have uh, the shipping method and the other things. So mm-hmm. shipping method and the freight items. So this is purely uh, on the uh, or call the supply chain part of it. So mm-hmm. where we will have the shipping method, like how are we shipping it, and what is the terms, whether we will pay it or vendor will pay. So all those details will come in. So again, the so this freight- is basically order management. 
no this is purchasing purchasing okay yeah for order management also we will have but that we will set up in the customer okay yeah so for this also we will have shipping and the other things because vendor will be in different location and we will be in different mm -hmm. location so we will have shipping freight and fb okay. in all those things okay yeah and uh, apart from that uh, we have uh, maybe the inventory and the other things come in so where we will uh, say whether this is an uh, onset point or uh, how do we want to have uh, the inventory controlled mm -hmm. so that is all about in the purchasing tab okay. and then we have uh, the receiving so in receiving basically we will have like how do we want to handle our receiving so if there is an exception in the shipping mm -hmm. so whether we want to reject it or whether we want to give warning so again mm -hmm. this will be set up in the purchasing module and if okay. we have given it at the vendor so which means that a purchasing configuration will be overridden by the supplier side configuration so if we are giving it here okay and we have uh, different uh, routing so the routing options that we have is that uh, direct inspection and standard so standard is nothing but we receive the uh, receipt and we will just verify and the, the receiving part will be automated Okay. And we have that. So, <clears throat> so all these uh, things that are there here are not part of. Uh, let I'm just trying to think. In EBS, they are different, right? The way the supplier is set up. Yeah, EBS. If you see this, we call uh, the two-way, three-way, and four-way matching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, what I'm trying to get at is right. Um, when you, uh, I mean, whatever I remember, I don't know completely, but I can just say, uh, do we have uh, purchasing, receiving, invoicing, everything there in uh, EBS? Yes, we have. We have. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we have. Yes, so yes. that's not something new here. Yeah, this is not new. Oh, okay. Yeah, only few things, a few fields are added, but apart from that, we have. Uh, all those uh, information there in EBS as well. Okay. Yeah, because in EBS, we, we don't generally see uh, different tabs for site and address and the profile. So we will mm -hmm. have as on one single page and we don't yeah. have a concept of creating a supply site created by another uh, employee so that we mm -hmm. have a transition. So this will be the changes in uh, Fusion. But okay. apart from that, this receiving uh, invoicing, th these things are there in our uh, EBS as well. Okay. Yeah, so these are the options that we have. So direct our inspection. So inspection is nothing but uh, we will inspect and then we will give the confirmation. So mm -hmm. based on that, uh, we will have the PO matched. Okay. And if you wanted to have the uh, receipt tolerance, like mm -hmm. uh, we have maybe 10 quantity ordered and if we wanted to receive uh, maybe 11 quantity so that we can give the tolerance. Mm -hmm. So the over application action that how do we want to handle it. So those part also we can uh, enable it mm -hmm. here. So basically these are all like the controlling part of it. Okay. And uh, we have the uh, invoices. Okay. So invoice is nothing but like uh, here we can attach our uh, like we have the payment terms that payment you are asking for so that oh, you okay. have and we have the payment date basis and also we have the pay date basis. Mm -hmm. So this we have and uh, apart from that uh, here we have uh, the discount part whether we wanted to default or we don't want to use for this particular site, we can enable this. Mm -hmm. So for now, I'm just giving uh, to pick from the payable options. Okay. And then we have uh, the payment hold controls. So here, if I say hold uh, payment, so which means unless I have the purchase order, I will not be able to uh, create any invoices. Mm -hmm. So I will say no for this option. Okay. Sorry, this is our uh, second option. So the first option is that uh, hold all the invoices. So which means 
So whichever invoice I'm creating, uh, by default, it will go and hold. So I will have to release the hold manually. Okay. So second option is the one that uh, we have unmatched invoices. So which means it should have a purchase order to match. Okay. And uh, this is like unvalidated invoices. So if the invoices is unvalidated, which means by default, uh, the, uh, the invoice status will be in unvalidated. So if we wanted to maybe uh, have hold, if this is unvalidated, so we can have this mm -hmm. as a nest. So I don't want this option, so I say no. Okay. And then we have uh, the payment uh, currencies and the other inputs to be given. So we can have a different currency for the invoice and we can have the different currency in payment, in fusion. But this okay. is not available in uh, EBS. So this okay. is new in fusion. So we will see that mm -hmm. and uh, we have the invoice amount mm -hmm. limit so for a particular mm -hmm. invoice so mm -hmm. for this vendor if you want to set up a limit we can set up okay and we have the uh, invoice match option so whether we wanted to have a purchase order receipt or uh, the inspection advice so based on that we can set up uh, this options okay so you can see here the match options, two way, three way and four way. Okay. And uh, the payment currency and the pay group is nothing but our uh, classification. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have in invoicing. And then we have the payments. So payments is uh, again, similar to what we saw in uh, the uh, supplier. So we will just okay. say this is uh, defaulted. Defaulted, okay. Yeah. And uh, site assignment, we saw that uh, it will basically mm -hmm. uh, default or give which uh, you will have access to this. Yeah. And then uh, qualification, like this, will, this is kind of an additional information. Okay. What do, what do you mean qualifications or, or the supplier uh, qualifications? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think there is a model called iSupplier or something. So uh, somewhere we will have uh, the assessment and the other things coming in for the uh, supply. So if oh, okay. you here, we will not be able to add any information. So this okay. is only viewable. Okay. Yeah, so these are the options that we have. So we, we have created the supplier site as well. So we have given the access to the uh, site so we can uh, have this created okay so apart from that but, if you, yeah yeah but typically when it comes to a e fusion um uh, right so uh, ap uh, ap starts off with only invoicing piece supplier we are not worried about yeah okay supplying in the sense you're saying purchasing it's Supplier creation, I meant, I mean, in the sense that, so it's yes, part it's of purchasing, correct. right? Yeah, so yeah. we're not bothered, I mean, as a consultant, I'm not bothered about uh, how to create a supplier and all that. Yes, correct. But it's good to have a knowledge of where, where it's, what are the things that happen? Yes. Okay. Because we will have the supplier conversion and all those things. So where we will we need to know the basic uh, inputs. Uh, okay. So that's good to have knowledge at this part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we are almost done. So apart from that, we, this is again an additional information, but still we have an option, option to have a contact per person from the supplier office. Okay. Yeah, so we can add more than one also. So these are the options that we have. So, one so here have, the qualifications are different from the qualifications that were there at the, uh, or is it the same qualifications? Same. Thing. Same, okay. Yeah, so we have uh, configured the supplier. So I, I will submit this so that we can use this at uh, invoice page. Yeah. Okay. So we have created the supplier. Mm -hmm. So through manage uh, supplier, we can basically see this uh, information. Search for that supplier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. As is uh, data vendor. Yeah, it is here. Yeah. yeah it has been authorized. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so this is about the supplier authorization. Okay. I think you're, you're out of time. Yeah, we'll start tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. sure. Thanks. Yeah, thanks.